these out, Kathleen, would you help me with that? This is kind of a hodgepodge of notes that I've cobbled together there. There's actually four or three different methods of talking to people about Jesus there. Uh, the front page, if you've seen any of the Ray Comfort uh, videos that we've shown, that's basically the method he uses. It's, it's kind of hard to find, follow. There's all these different arrows going around. Uh, we're not going to look at that one tonight, but I just thought you might like to have it. Um, I have it in color as well, but it, it printed in black and white, and I thought it's actually easier to read in black and white. So um, anyway, if, if you've seen that, that's where he talks to them about uh, the Ten Commandments. And uh, if God were to judge you, you know, most people, the, the problem is getting them lost. Uh, where our second son lives, he said everybody's a Christian in his town. He said, you can't ask people, are you a Christian? Uh, everybody thinks they're a Christian. Some people think they're a Christian because they're America, Christian, Christian country, you know. Um, so you, got, you have to sometimes ask a different question. You have to get people where they see. And if you've ever seen these Ray Comfort, when he talks to people, um, what's the, there's a term he uses, um, their mouth is stopped. And it's true. You just see their faces change. They're, sometimes they'll be joking around, and then they'll get very serious. And, uh, you, you know, they're confronted with their sin. So that's, that's uh, something that you can look through on your own there. But uh, I thought we'd go to the middle of the little booklet. That's the main part I was going to give you. Let me, let me ask you, maybe some of you have something you would say. How, how do you start? Do you have something you say when you talk to people, the first thing you say? Or My, my father-in-law, uh, in I mainly saw him do this in New Mexico, he used to say, are you a Christian? And he'd have a tract in his hand. Um, does anybody have something that they like to say or they've said? Or? I just take it as it goes. Yeah. Sometimes people ask you. Yes. Uh, you know, or you just get to, t you get to talking. Uh, it's, you know, there's all different situations, of course. Uh, but sometimes just getting started is the hard part. Yeah. Because that usually tells you where they're coming from, what they're trusting. All right. Yeah. Because it, it really clears the air because it, otherwise you're kind of telling them the answer. Right. Asking them what they think. Yeah. Are you a Christian? Yeah. Or have you trusted the Lord as your Savior? You yeah. Those questions is kind of like I'm asking, I'm giving you the answer. Exactly. But yeah. If you ask them what they think gets a person to heaven, then. What do you think? Some, sometimes even just something that's happened or like when that film was on about Jesus' crucifixion. Sometimes you could get a conversation started about something going on. Um, I also use my, te my own testimony. Yeah, telling people what's happened to you. It's hard for people to stop you when you're talking yeah. about yourself. Yeah. You know, it's almost rude to talk, to stop people talking about yeah. themselves. The main thing is just have a go. You know, if, if somebody is willing to talk, uh, talk to them. When Brother Panero was here, he, he gave us some questions. And it's, it's basically a, a method that somebody has come up with. It's, it's in this book. This is the New Testament. Uh, sharing Jesus without fear. And uh, those questions are there on the right side of the inside page there. Step one, uh, use questions that determine where God is working. And just in conversation, uh, do you have any kind of a spiritual belief? Uh, do you think about spiritual things? Uh, to you, who's Jesus? You know, for a lot of people. And, and you're not trying to argue with them. You're, you're not trying to give them your opinion. You're just seeing what they think. Uh, do you believe there's a heaven and a hell? Uh, if you died right now, where would you go? If heaven, why? Why would you go to heaven? <laughs> and then, uh, if what you believe were not true, would you want to know? And that's, that's a method that somebody has come up with. Of course, you know, any particular method is not going to work with everybody or uh, all the time kind of a thing. But uh, it's, it's a good, it's a method. And uh, asking people, the question we were taught, I think, in Bible college was, uh, if you died today, do you know for sure, based on the Bible, that you'd, you'd go to heaven? And uh, 
In fact, I've been meaning to try and find a pin that's a, it's a question mark, where you wear this pin that's a question mark. If anybody says, what, what's that question mark? You say, if you died today, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? <laughs> oh, sorry, I asked. <laughs> they, they might say, yeah, I don't know. Um, but it, it's just a matter of knowing how to, how to get started um, and just conversing with people. If people aren't willing to talk, you'll soon know it. And uh, when I'm going door to door, I'm, I don't try to force people at all. And I quite often ask that, that first question, do you have any kind of a spiritual belief in, in one form or another? And I'm amazed how many people say no. And I think sometimes they say that just so they don't have to keep talking to me. So uh, sometimes going door knocking, I actually talk about other things first. Um, you know, if I notice something that I admire, boy, I really like that plant you've had. You must be a really good gardener. And, you know, just, just to where they will talk to you at all and then, you know, get into other things. But the, uh, the main thing that you, you need to know then is, well, what do I share with people? You know, what, what, do we, what, are, what are the Bible verses that I can use? Well, of course, there's a whole Bible full. Uh, you know, there's thousands of verses that you could use. But it's good to have something in mind that you can, you can share with them. Now, on the um, left side of the page are some directions. You can use this or not. Um, and what, they've, what we've done here is typed out how to put this in your Bible to where you could just follow through in your Bible and show them these verses. Um, you, can, you can get real clever and put it upside down so you can hold your Bible facing them and still read the references. And, and listen, they're not going to worry if you're using cheat notes or whatever you want to call them. Uh, they've even done research on it. And, uh, you know, whether you have it all in your head or have a, have a note that, that says turn to this or turn to that, people don't care. You know, if, if they're going to listen at all, they're going to want to listen. And uh, so st uh, step one is just engaging them in conversation. And then step two is, is if they say they would want to know. Now, what, what they recommend is if they say no, sit and just drop it. Well, if you ever want to talk about it, let me know or whatever. Uh, but if they say yes, well, then say, well, you need to proceed then through, through Scripture. I mean, can you imagine if somebody came up to you and said, I've heard you go to Fellowship Baptist Church. How do I get to heaven? Well, you need to know at least a verse to go to, don't you? And uh, with uh, several of these, um, you know, they, of the different methods I've seen, they, they, we start with sin, Romans 3.23 or a verse like that. And uh, you let the Bible speak. What they recommend, I think this is a, a, a great thing to do, except when somebody can't read or can't read very well, is to actually have them read it. And then just ask them, uh, what does this say to you? you know, you're not, that way you're not forcing some kind of, you know, it's not like a magic trick where you're forcing a card kind of thing. You just want them to see, and they'll, they'll see that. You know, if, if you're, you're not being a, a salesman, you're just letting them know. And uh, so... If, if you wanted to use this method, I, I would encourage you to do it just, just like it says. You know, you get a highlighter, get a pencil, and uh, uh, mark right through it. In fact, I've even made little, uh, little things you can put in your Bible that have some of these questions. And uh, in the middle it says, this is a marked Bible explaining how to become a Christian. Turn to page, and you put the page, whatever it is, the first, you know, Romans 3.23. And then it's got the, the questions, do you have any spiritual belief? And and then the, the clothes that we ha they have here, it's got all those here. I've, I've got that in one of my Bibles here. Um, I, I brought several Bibles just to show you. The, in this Bible, it, it's a marked, a marked one. And I used to be able to read what it said. Um, this is a marked Bible. And this, this particular plan is the one on the back uh, where you start with John 10.10. 10. Uh, and it, it says, he's come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. You start with the love of God, then you go to, to sin. Um, but anyway, with, with this one, I could, I could follow through. I just started with the one, and, and you, it tells you the next one to go to, and, and so on. I brought it. I don't know if you can see that, but that's, a, that's highlighted. <laughs> now, the problem with little Bibles are they have little letters, yeah. and uh, that's fine when you yeah. are young. Yeah, But... Uh, you know, that's, that's the problem. You can, you can only carry a Bible so big. So, um, 
Yeah. Sometimes the, that's the advantage of a New Testament, is it can be small and still have a little bit bigger, bigger print. But anyway, I, I did that in this Bible. I, I think I've done it as well in, in this, this Bible with a different, different plan. You can get, you can get uh, almost too ingenious with your plans, marking this and that and the other thing. But the main thing is just to have in, in your mind, or if, if you're not satisfied that you'll remember it in your mind. Yeah, with this one, I haven't highlighted so much. This is pretty beat up. You can almost see that. Um, anyway, I just wanted to, it, to, to show you that uh, it does work. Highlighters are designed where they shouldn't bleed through. Uh, you will see evidence of it on the other side just because it's a color. But um, I anyway, if I would encourage you to, whether you use these plans or not, I would encourage you this week to work out what verses you would try to use to show somebody how to be saved. And uh, like I said, I've given you three different things here. Uh, we used to use one called the Romans Road, which is basically some of the the, the one on the back there where you just stay in the book of Romans. But uh, obviously we have the whole Bible. You can go Old Testament, New Testament. But uh, I just want to encourage you to be thinking, first of all, how to start, then what to say. And uh, with this one, they start with Romans 3, 23, all of sin and come short of the glory of God. What does that say to you? You know, and, and see what they say. And the second one is the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What does that say to you? And uh, with some of these, they encourage you to, uh, um, if you go on to the left side of the page there, number five, circle the word sin. Underline the word death. Put an asterisk by the word death. In the margin of your Bible, indicate that death in this context is not just the cessation of life on earth, but the second death or hell. Now, you, you wouldn't want to write out a lot of things there. Underline the word through. So there's, these are things you're going to maybe point out to them or encourage them to think about. The one verse they, they recommend that you don't ask, what does this say to you, is John 3.3. 3. Um, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Yeah, and they encourage you to ask, well, why did, why did Jesus come to die? And uh, to help, help them to see that. Um, anyway, do you, do you have questions uh, about these? Here's the second assignment I would give you, not only to mark it in your Bible, but practice it with somebody. Get somebody that's doing the same thing, or just get a friend or somebody staying at your house. Just say, listen, I need to do I've got an assignment I've got to do. Can, I, can you help me? <laughs> and just, just go through it. We've had people get saved at soul winning practice. You know, people who've come to practice soul winning have gotten saved. And I've heard of it more than once. Uh, we had it in our ministry. I've heard of other people having it. Um, you know, people don't know. And they read the verses and they think, oh, hang on. <laughs> I need to do that. And, uh, you know, God's word can, can touch their heart. And then they, they use uh, these questions at the end. I mean, obviously, these are just things that uh, someone's come up with. Uh, close with key questions. Are you a sinner? Uh, do you want forgiveness for your sins? Do you believe Jesus died on the cross and rose again? Are you willing to surrender your life to Christ? Are you ready to invite Jesus into your heart and life? Obviously, you don't just rattle them off like that, but just asking them if they would like to trust Christ uh, at that point. And then, uh, you know, you don't, it's hard to know because you don't want to push somebody into doing something they don't mean. Um, almost, if anything, this sounds terrible, but it would be almost better to discourage them from doing it than to push them into doing something they don't mean. Because when people pray the prayer and don't mean it, it's almost like getting an inoculation. It's, you know, they don't get the Holy Spirit, but they feel like they've done what they have to do. So be, be careful. I mean, don't be afraid. God, God knows. But um, in, in closing, what you're, you're doing is trying to help them see how it applies to them and how they can, they can do what it what we've talked about. They can pray. Ask the Lord to save them right now. Uh, the one on the back is a little simpler. Um, God loves you, but there's a problem. Um, all of sin. Romans 3.23. What Christ has done uses Romans 5.8. God commendeth his love toward us. What you need to do, very simple, isn't it? 
Uh, Romans 6.23, you must receive God's gift. And, and then Romans 10, of course, is whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And, and then a, a good thing to add, if somebody pr prays and asks the Lord to save them, go through a few verses of what the Lord wants them to do. Uh, Matthew 10 is, is where it says, uh, it talks about telling others and not, not being ashamed of, of the Lord. Let me read that one out. Matthew 10, whosoever there shall, therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. When people really get saved, it's a pretty natural thing to tell others. And just encourage them to do that. Uh, maybe even encourage them to say, you know, at church, it would be a good thing for you to let the whole church know. Everybody would be excited about that. And then uh, about baptism and about being part of a church. You know, just real simple things, uh, depending upon, of course, the situation, how much time you have and so on. Well, there's the world's shortest soul winning <laughs> lesson. Um, but I, I'm serious about encouraging you, asking you to find a Bible you can put this in. Choose, choose a method, you know, one of those or another one if you, you'd rather use different verses. Um, and, and mark it down to where you, you've, you've got it ready to go. And then practice it with somebody. Get, just get somebody and say, Let, let's have a... Let's, you lead me and I'll lead you, you know. Uh, just, uh, just do it. And uh, at, at least you'll, you'll be a little bit familiar with it. Any uh, comments or questions before we, we quit on that? Um, another. Okay, Brian. Uh, There's an app that you can get called the Gospel in Seven. Okay, yeah. It's about seven minutes long. And right. And you can present it or it'll actually right. kind of like a... Video okay, I mentioned one Sunday morning as well that I have on my phone, but my phone is too small to hardly show anybody. It's better on a little bigger thing. But yeah, there's some real good apps if you want to do it electronically. And for some people, that's an end. Yeah, you know, they're interested in apps. Let me show you this new app I've got. <laughs> and uh, li like the one I have is the same as yours where you can have it talk yeah. or you can just use the pictures. Right. And they're great. Hmm. And I also sometimes pray that God gives the boldness to do that. Yeah. Because usually that will happen just naturally. Yeah. And when God presses that on your heart, you can also ask for wisdom. Right. Even before you start, because the Lord would normally often give you the door. Hmm. You know, and that's like you would know where that person is spiritually at as well. Yeah. So I would Yeah, it's not particularly a method, is it? I mean, it's. Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit's got to speak to a person's heart, but it helps to, to prepare and yes. to have some verses in mind. I always think the word witness. Well, you can't witness to something you haven't witnessed. Right. And that's why I like your own testimony is the greatest mm. witnessing tool you have. Yeah. yeah. What Jesus has done for you mm. is and more convincing. Yeah. 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 What he has done and what he is doing. Yeah. The easiest outline for your testimony is past, present, and future. Yeah, you know, what you were before, how you got saved, and how it's changed your life. You know, and, and, but it's something we need to think about, and and as well, like like Ravo was saying, you, you pray, and the Lord give you an opportunity. We well, don't think, oh, is this an opportunity? <laughs> yeah, take it. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You know, they're going to say, I don't want to talk to you about this. Well, all right, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who is, I think I was talking to Jason. Um, I, I was at the shopping center. And you all know the feeling how when you're walking down the middle of the shopping center and somebody's saying, uh, sir, sir, can we talk to you? Can we talk to you? <laughs> and, and, you know, you don't really want to talk to them, but. Uh, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. And when, in some situations, that's what's happening with people. It's not that they don't want to talk to you as a person or that they hate God. They just don't want to be bothered, you know, by anybody. I've had people yell at me going door knocking before they even knew who I was. <laughs> you know, you're just walking down the path and <laughs> off they go. They're just having a bad day, you know. Uh, 
can't worry about it. But anyway, yeah, the, the Lord knows. And uh, listen, there's folks who, who do want to hear. And then there's folks who, if they knew, would want to hear. Uh, there's those who are, who are violently opposed to it. Don't, don't get me wrong, but uh, uh, can't worry about that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was, yeah, I've had it. We've all had it happen. We're not Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, we are. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to quit there. But uh, I just wanted to give you some information here, and uh, we're, we're going to talk about it again next week, and I'm going to ask you if you've done your assignment, all right?